I've got my captain. Mm. Gamers will be ready in the near future. Hostum versus Cerro. Historically, that is something that has gone very well for Cerro. We can take a look at the legal act together. And I do recommend that if you're watching this with your son or your daughter, please cover their eyes because there is blood in the streets. If a legal act works. A legal act does not work right now. Why does it not work, guys? What's wrong with my illegal act? There is no trigger today now. We can only send in three players and obviously Showtime has been a man on fire. So, And Trigger has been very, very busy with Battle Aces. He's one of the best Battle Aces players on this planet. These are the matchups today. As I said, this one is live. This one is live. Rainer and Scarlet have played a couple of days ago. The reason for that is that uh, Rainer is currently in Croatia. He's almost coming back. He's just going on a tiny, tiny holiday with his mates. He just had his birthday. So it's a little birthday trip. But I believe he's already on his way back to Italy. And then it is head down for Rainer. And he's going to do his absolute best for a month straight to be the best possible Rainer at the Esports World Cup. Is there anywhere to see the list of top battle aces? Yes, there is. There is a leaderboard. I can try to find that link for you, but if you don't mind, I will do that later. You can also just try it yourself. If you go to www.playbattleaces.com, uh, there is leaderboards somewhere on the top side. If you click on the menu, there is leaderboards. I don't want to do that now. I want to focus on these two handsome nerds. It is Horstum. It is Yona. It is Shopify Rebellion versus Basilisk. A big match here in the regular season. In the bottom left side, there he is. Our goat, the great Yona Satala. And in the top right side, we've got an all-time StarCraft 2 fan favorite. The captain, the best Dutch Protoss player named Kevin that the world has ever seen. It's Harstum. Harstum is focused. He's dialed in. This is a different calf than you see in other moments. Hmm. Like, like, is it working for you? I tried to, uh, I tried to load it. Maybe it's because all of you guys tried to load the league. Like it doesn't work. It should work now. All right. As we have very macro-oriented standard openings here, I want to take a tiny look at the league. Like guys, because it wasn't working. It's working now, indeed. That's so weird. But okay. Cyril, so Harstem. This is the history between Cyril and Harstem. 46 to 15 in series 20 no 20 to 5 in series excuse me and 46 15 in maps 2020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020202020
And obviously, Serral does not have to be too aggressive. But I like the idea. Honestly, if you play against a Resonant Enclave opening, if you just go for a Lair attack with one Overseer and then a bunch of Queens, Roaches, Ravages, as Harstum is going to try to do the same thing. I mean, Yona. Once upon a time, guys, I had a birthday request for Serral. We played a game on purity and industry. I said, Sarah, do you want to play one game against me for my viewers? It would be awesome. And he said, yes, I guess. Why not? And I took the gold in the bottom side of purity and industry on my birthday. You know what happened, guys? Five and a half minutes into the game. <coughs> a Nidus Network attack. And I was like, what? It's my birthday. And then Yona said the legendary words. I can't let you get away with that. And I was like, I'm pretty certain you can, Yona. You can literally get me to get away with like four gold bases and you would still win. But yeah, the man knighted me on my birthday. <laughs> Serral drops the Baning Nest, by the way. That is fun. I like uh, Link Bane defenses against uh, Resonant Enclave Adepts. I've always been a big fan of that. A lot of Zerg pros disagree with me. They say this is not the way. Yona says this might be the way. It's a bunch of queens battling adapts. Very good micro so far on the side of Serral. Saves this queen. That's the queen with a lot of energy too. First four bailings, eight bailings, nine bailings are morphing. And I don't think Harstum has any clue that this is happening. A single battery is not going to save him here. A single immortal is not going to save him here. Harstum is going to have to split like he's Moses. Only then he will have a shot. But here comes Yona with the wraparound. Adepts are going to clump up. Oh, the bailing connections are so good. Life is so good if you are the great Yona Sotala. Oh, that's a sick force field by the captain. I gotta give it to him. That is an excellent force field by Harstam. But I still think the Banelings will find what they are looking for. Even though that's a lot of links dying. That is the best force field Harstam could have ever dropped. Is it gonna be good enough to save this base? Because he's microing his immortal, microing his stalker. The final two adapts in that little choke point. Honestly, guys, 10 out of 10 job here by Harstam. Wow. Okay. Harstam sort of holds. That doesn't mean that he's totally out of the woods yet. But that was actually an incredibly good hold. What a force field there. Without that force field, this game is Omega over. Now, I'm not saying that Harstam is there. Because there is a second wave. Coco's a very famous second wave. But Harstam is going to get another hero sentry. Incredibly sick indeed by the man that you guys like to call the captain. And I'm all for it. But he's not my captain today. Because I am also a captain. One force field goes down. Oh, there was only one force field available. Yona baited him with a force field on the right side. And that allows the Banelings this time around to sneak through the bottom. Those Lynx guys baited out the force field. And that is going to do it. Oh, that's so sick. Arstam needed one more sentry there. But he only had a single sentry. That is amazing by Serral. Poking with the Lynx in the top right. Let's take another look at that. Because that was fantastic. We can go back as Harstam is shaking this one off. I want to go back to that first initial hold. Like this start was really good for Serral. But then this force field right here. This sentry with the battery overcharge. is the most clutch force field. That actually makes this a bit of a hold. Obviously it went on and it went on and it went on. But in the end. Now that the dust had settled. Supplies are close. Workers favor Harstam. This was not all that bad. Serral was aware of it. Serral is ready for round two, and Harstam, instead of having two sentries here, guys, just has that one sentry again. And we have Serral here with the Lynx. He's going to sneak them towards the top right. He's going to pretend he goes for that Immortal. He commits for it a little bit, baits out the force field, opens the door in the bottom left of the Nexus, and then allows these Banelings to just get the sickest connections. Well done. 1 0 lead for a Yona. I think with one more sentry there, Harstam does hold. And then he's actually in a good spot. But to say that he's just going to win would obviously be very silly. Because nobody just wins games against Saro. <laughs> you can have the best start imaginable. You can have the best start that your sweet baby dreams are made out of. You don't win against Saro until he taps out. And saying anything otherwise would be ludicrous. <laughs> I don't think that Harstam loves the idea of making Immortals against Lynx and Banes, but obviously A, Immortals are very tanky, and B, 
There is a chance that obviously Serral just makes one poke with Link Bane and then he goes into Roaches. And then it's nice if you already have a couple of Immortals. And see, even if you feel the Immortals not useful, but if all of your gates are on cooldown and you're building probes, you may as well build an Immortal. Because an Immortal is still better than not having anything. One oh eight for Iona, one oh eight for Basilisk. As we have loaded into Dynasty, though, some people say this is one of the best PVZ maps we have ever seen. Is that then good enough for the captain to snap that seven-year losing streak he's currently on against his opponent? Twenty seventeen. It may seem somewhat recent, guys, but that legitimately was seven years ago. It's not quite September yet, so it's a little less. But <laughs> bottom left side of Dynasty. It is the captain representing the Shopify Rebellion, Horstum. Top right side, it is the one and only. The GOAT. The greatest to ever do it. Jonas Sutala representing Basilisk. And Showtime, of course. And I stopped in my sentence there, guys, because Cero took the Mega Base. A little while ago, we had a map in our map pool called Equilibrium. And Equilibrium was the first map ever in competitive StarCraft 2 play. That gave you gold minerals and a rich Vespian geyser. This map sort of has that, but not really. Because most of the time you take your hatch obviously as a pocket expand, but as a Zerg, it's so difficult to then defend your drones. And Saro says, well, that's not gonna stop me from trying to get my hands on a mega base. I'm just gonna take it on the other side. According to Liquipedia, Saro is not a goat. I highly doubt that we can read that anywhere on Liquipedia. I know there is one Starcraft fan from Germany who likes writing article articles, and he thinks Sarah is not the GOAT. <laughs> and everybody's entitled to have their own opinion, even if they're wrong. And that man is wrong. <laughs> and Artosis obviously is wrong too, and he talks about Rogue being the GOAT, but Artosis just wants you guys to click on his videos. Artosis is actually a pretty smart guy. He, he knows. Deep down inside. When Artosis turns off his computer, we only see what's in front of the camera. But behind the camera, Artosis has a poster of Cero. And he knows his true goat. But obviously, saying what everybody else believes in is not going to get anybody to watch your videos. So. <laughs> Artosis has Yona posters all over his streaming room. They are just not inside of the camera. Don't you guys worry. <laughs> mm -hmm. He might even have a Serral tattoo. <laughs> When's the last time I've seen Artosis without a shirt? Home Story Cup 20 in Berlin. But after that, Jona has continued to win tournaments for five years straight. So there is a very good chance that Artosis is low-key walking around with a Serral tattoo. I believe it. <laughs> Thank you, by the way, Ravi, for the 300 bits. Sorry, mate, I missed it. I'm sure that Horstim has played against this before, guys. A Zerg player who takes the Mega Base. I kind of feel that playing Stargate here would have been slightly better. But, yeah, playing Resonating Glaives is maybe not the worst idea either. Open up with a bunch of uh, Resonating Glaive adapts. Push back the creep a little bit. Try to find an opening. Maybe grab a Queen. And then follow it up with Immortals and Sentries of two and a half, three bases. Could be an amazing play for Horstim. Zero's not the first one to do it in Infinity, but a lot of Zerg players stop doing it because they just feel like it's too difficult to survive against the two and a half, three base push of Immortals, Sentries, a crazy amount of Adepts, and maybe an Archon or two. And who won that Homestory Cup? Homestory Cup 20? Zero. <laughs> Sarah won. That was a great home story cup, by the way. Not just because we were in Berlin and we were in a water park and we had Artosis and we had such a good time with Artosis that weekend. Uh, and, and for me, it's the most special StarCraft 2 event ever. Because I did not possibly think they could ever run a StarCraft tournament in a water park. But they did. By the way, if Sero attacks without a lair, he could be in trouble, guys, because there is a Dark Shrine. If Sero commits, I mean, hopefully these units are just defensive units. But if Serral commits to an attack without a lair, he is in serious, serious trouble against Dark Templars. But the last thing I want to say about that Home Story Cup event quickly is that Raynor and Serral had some of the best ZVZs I think you're ever going to see. 
Uh, Rainer was so good at event. He was so powerful. He played so incredibly well. And I will always remember that event as I feel the first time that Rainer played better StarCraft than Sarah. Even if he did not win the event, I felt Rainer played better StarCraft and that made that a very memorable event for me. Harstim lost a couple of adapts, but it's okay because Harstim will never ever die here, guys. Oh, there is the lair, but here are the DTs. I wonder what Serral does. Serral sees everything, right? Did he see that? I don't know if he saw that. Good job by Harstem as he snipes one of the Ravagers. Serral was going to poke in the front and harass with a single Ravager. Now Harstem in the return is going to lose all these adapts. I saw Spore Crawlers on the production tab. Are they in all the right places? Is Yona's going to see it now. Oh, but he has no Spore in the main. There is no Spore Crawler in the main. There is one at the Mega Base. There's one in the natural. Harstam here in a sweet position with two Dark Templars in the main base of Serral. He's going to find some damage. Obviously, Serral moves his Spore Crawler over immediately. So, oh, only three drones. How is that humanly possible? However, yeah, well, you're, uh, you're cheering too early, uh, Sal. The man has literally killed only three drones. And has now already killed one of the DTs. And now he's going to probably surround that Dark Templar with his Zerglings and move the Spore and kill the second one too. Saro is a freak. I've said it many times. And I mean this in the best possible way. That man really is a freak. Hello, Kolaris. I was talking about you earlier, mate. I haven't seen you stop by lately. Yep, there goes the second DT. Kills it with an Overseer. Guys, we just saw two DTs walk into a Zerg. That had no spore crawler, no overseer in the main. A whole bunch of exposed drones was attacking on the other side of the map. And what has happened? He has now killed three Dark Templars and lost three drones. <laughs> like, how do you even explain this? We have two more Dark Templars though, running on top of another base. But Sarah is so quick in pulling the drones away. Not as oh my god, he kills another DT and he doesn't lose a single worker. It ain't fair. <laughs> Life is not fair. Yona, stop it, mate. You're ridiculous. He is down nine workers, though. But I do feel that he has survived a very scary phase. He's got a way bigger army. And he has killed, like, five Dark Templars at this point. Saro really is so freaking good. But Harstam is still in this game. Just because Saro has defended incredibly well against a bunch of DTs that he was not totally ready for, that doesn't mean that this game is over. But yeah, Harstam needs Immortals. Absolutely. Ideally, maybe a second Robo here. Because just Archons are not going to kill Roaches and Ravages of Sarah. Sarah fires up Tunneling Claws, by the way. Tunneling Claws and Burrow. A 2-0 would obviously be amazing for us here. So Austin does have a 4 Zealots getting on top of the Mega Base once more. But with the Creep Threat that is now making some progress. With the Overseers that are going to give Sarah some vision. That is not going to get much done. Does Serral play Battle Aces? Uh, I have not seen him play a single game of Battle Aces. He has also absolutely not asked me for a beta key. I have the feeling, mate, that Serral is just such a dedicated, diehard professional that he says, I've got the biggest StarCraft tournament in history coming up. I'm not playing anything besides StarCraft. Serral needs 400k. I don't know if he needs it, but I do think he wants it. But I also think he just really wants to win the tournament. That trophy looks amazing. I think it's going to be a very long-standing, incredibly prestigious event. So, yeah, he absolutely wants it. Seven workers go down. The battery goes down. But Harstam does find a little bit of success, perhaps, in the main base of Serral. Even though I've not seen a single drone die yet. I don't know about Archons, man. Archons chasing roaches and ravages. I mean, the Zealots, good movement on the Zealots, actually. That's going to make it a little bit more difficult for these roaches and ravages to retreat. But we don't have Immortals here. And... Archons can be good, but you really need those Immortals with their range in the back line. GG gets called. Jonas Sotala looks good as ever. And he continues winning against the captain. A 2-0. An absolute animal. There is no other way to describe it. He is an absolute animal. I don't know how he does it. Every single time we look at him, he just looks as good as he's ever done. Does the man ever have a bad day, guys? I'm sure he's had a couple of bad days, but... GG gets gold. Serral gets a 
And that means that if Showtime just can get a single map for us here, I think we are in an amazing spot to win this clan war. 